Well, welcome, boys and girls. Welcome to J. Crew. This is a beautiful day that the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad therein. I am so happy that you have joined us today. And I pray that as we go through the word today, that you are going to learn more about God, more about him being the great creator he is, and how much he truly loves you and desire a special relationship with you. Amen. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go into prayer. And after prayer, we are going to go right into the word for today. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. We thank you, Father, for being the great creator you are. We thank you, Father, for establishing a relationship with us, dear Lord. And even though um, sin came into the world that sort of messed up the relationship. You, dear Lord, stepped in and you sent your only son, Jesus, to make it possible for us to permanently have a relationship with you. And we thank you. We thank you, dear Lord, for the hope of heaven that we are one day going to achieve. And we pray, Father, that during the time that we are here on this earth, that we will let our light shine, that we will go about our ways, dear Lord, obeying your commands, putting into practice all of the words and all of the commandments in which you have um. You have placed in our hearts, dear Lord, that you may be honored, that you may be glorified. And when we see you face to face, you welcome us into your kingdom and say, well done, thy good and faithful servants. Lord, we love you. We adore you. Blessed be your most holy name. I pray, Father, that you will bless each of these children as they um, hear your word. Give them wisdom. Give them understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so boys and girls, we're going to pause for a moment, and we're going to go right into the word. Amen? We're going to be in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. Amen? Amen. All right, boys and girls, now we're going to go into the word. Genesis chapter 1 and 2. And what we want to do is we are going to just talk about God creation of people. And it's um, it, it took a whole lesson for us to talk about this because... We want to make sure that you understand that you are very special in the sight of God. Amen. Yes, he created everything else, but he did something very unique in the creation of people. And I want you to learn that because I want you to understand that God loves you and he wants you to be with him forever. Amen. Amen. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a quick review. OK, we'll do a quick review and then we'll take it from there. So in six days, God created everything, and we want to take today one day and just talk about his creation of people, and boys and girls, I guarantee you at the very end, you are going to see how very special you really are. So let's do a quick review, okay? Let's start with the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he said that the earth was without form, and then it says also that the spirit of God actually hovered over, over, the, um, over the earth, okay? That's sort of kind of the picture that you see right now, but then here's what happened. On day one, God said, let there be, and there was day, and there was night. On day two, God said, let there be, and there was the sky. On day three, God said, let there be, and there was land and sea. On day four, I mean, day three, God also said, let there be, and there were plants. On day four, God said, let there be, and there was the sun, the moon, and the stars. Now, it's changed a little, but God said, on day five, God said, let thee, and there was the fish and the birds. And then on day six, God said, let thee, and then there was, were the land animals. So in other words, boys and girls, God spoke all of these things. He said either let there be, or he said let it, and it happened. And it just happened from the words that God has spoken. And then God was prepared to create the people. First, let's see here. God created everything and it was good. He said it and it was so. But God did not speak people into being. He made us different than all the other creations he created. 
He spoke everything else into being and it happened. But this is what he did. After he created everything over the six days up to the land animal, he put on his brakes. And he said in Genesis chapter one, verse 26 in the first part, he said, then God said, let us make human beings so they are like us. Whoa. He didn't say any of those things about the other one. He just said, let there be, and it happened. Or he said, let be, and it happened. But for us, he stopped. And then he said, let us make human beings so that they are like us. First, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this word, us. What does God mean, let us? What he means by that, boys and girls, this is something unique, and it's a, it's a, a new word that you are going to learn today. He's talking about the us being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everybody say Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We call these three the Trinity. Say Trinity. Trinity. And what Trinity is, is three persons, but one God. Three persons but one God. When I say three persons, you have the Father, the person, you have Son, the person, and you have the Holy Spirit, the person, but they all are one God. I know that's a little deep for you, um, young mind, for your young minds, but as you grow older, you will understand the Trinity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through the Bible as to the role of the Father, the role of the Son, the role of the Holy Spirit, but they all are one God. So they had a conversation with one another saying, let us make man a human being so that they are like us, let us. And so, and then it says, how does God make man like them? like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, let me explain this to you, okay? It's not on the outside that God is talking about making human beings like them. It's on the inside. It's with our thinking. That's our mind. It's with our morality. That's knowing right from wrong. It's with our will. That means we either obey or we don't obey or we disobey. And it's even with our relationships, our emotions, and our love. That is what God, when they said they want to make us like them, that is what it's meant. It's that on the inside, God wanted to make us like them. Amen? And so that is what we're going to talk about a little bit more deeper, okay? Because the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, Verses 19a. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2 and look at the first um, part, um, verses 19a. It says this. It says, now the Lord had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the air. So God formed all of the animals from the ground, okay, from the dirt of the earth. He formed even the birds from the dirt of the earth. And then in Genesis chapter to in verse number seven, listen to this. Here's what God did with man. And then God formed man from the dust of the ground. So God also formed man from the dust of the ground. So all of that, so the animals was made from the dirt of the ground and also um, the birds, but also man was made from the dirt of the ground. But God, he formed man from the dirt of the ground. He made his arms, his heads, his legs, his toes, all of the parts of the body of the man. But then here's what the Bible says God did after that, that he did not do with any other create parts of his creation. It says that God breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living being. Some people say, some versions say a living soul. In other words, God breathed into man's nostril and man became a living soul. He was not just spoken into being and became alive. God directly breathed into him um, the breath of life. 
It came from God, directly from God into man. So the soul lives forever because it came directly from an eternal God. So God breathed into the man's um, um, nostril and he became a living soul. Now, why did God do that? Why did he do that for all of the other creation? But he did it for you and he did it for me. And the reason why God did that is his desire is that we have a relationship with him forever. So boys and girls, here's the thing about the soul. A soul being eternal means that the soul will live forever. And God's desire is for the soul to live forever with him, to forever have a relationship with him. So a relationship that's that is really close knit. God wants it to last forever. That is why he breathed into the nostril of man and man became a living soul and the soul is going to live forever. Now, just like the, um, the body of an animal or the body of, um, of the bird is going to die and go back to the dirt. The same will happen with the body of man, but there's something on the inside that will live forever. And that is called the soul. So that is how God made us in his own image or made us to look like him. It's by breathing from him into us the breath of life and we became a living soul. And that is why now, just like God thinks and has reasoning, we have reasoning. Just like God knows right and wrong, we know right and wrong. Guess, let's, just as God know, have the, has a will, we have a will. Just as God desires a relationship with us and he loves us, we have it in our spirit to establish relationships and to love one another. And we also have in us emotions, just like God has emotions. In other words, we are like God down in our soul. Amen? Amen. And so that is what makes us different than the rest of creation. And so what God did after he created man and woman, he gave them responsibilities. He placed them in a garden. It's called the Garden of Eden. It's a place where God provided everything that they needed. He gave them a perfect garden. He gave them dominion over everything in the garden. That means they had um, power and authority over every animal in the garden and all and took care of everything else that was in the garden. They had responsibilities over everything in the garden. And God gave them a commandment not to eat from one of the trees in the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So all of those things God did, he did that specifically for man and gave man authority and dominion over all of everything else that was created. Amen? Amen. So that is who God is, and that is what, what makes us special, is that God separated us. He breathed into us a living soul, a breath of life, and we have become a living soul. And now being a living soul, basically we can have a relationship with God forever. Amen? Amen. Now, how can we put that into application? This relationship. The relationship between God and Adam and Eve was perfect at the beginning. Now, boys and girls, how can we establish a closer relationship with God? I know I want to have a closer relationship with God, and I pray that you do too. And it's one, a few things that you could do to actually establish such a relationship. One of the things that you could do is read your Bible. Read the word of God. Read the word of God. The word of God has, uh, it's sort of like a love letter from God, just instructing us on who he is, um, on what he desires of us. It described God the best that it could be described. He could be described. And that is one way of which we can actually draw closer to God. The more we learn about God, the closer we will draw towards God. But not only that, but also when it comes to, um, when it comes to a relationship, with God, we pray to God. That is communication. God wants us to communicate with him, just like he communicates with us through the reading of his word. We pray unto God, and that is how we communicate unto him, and that is how we come closer to him. And then not only that, but to obey God. The more that we obey God, the more that we're going to draw closer to him, because when we obey God, that is showing our trust in him. 
And as we show our trust in him by obedience, our relationship with him gets closer and closer, not farther apart, but closer and closer. Amen? Amen. So in conclusion, boys and girls, because we are special and have been made special in the image of God, every person is important. Every person, every living person is important to Almighty God. And God loves each of our souls and his desire is for each of us to spend eternity with him. That's forever with him in the kingdom of heaven. And to do the, that, though, we must make a choice. We have to make a choice as to whether or not we are going to put our faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior and our Lord so that we can have a relationship with God forever. And it's my prayer, boys and girls, that you have that desire to want to have that personal relationship with God. And to have that personal relationship with God, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you, using our little t-shirts, I'm going to share with you the gospel, God's plan of salvation. Okay, I'm going to use these little foams. And as I use them, you're going to see, you're going to hear some things that are familiar with you, either from last week or from what we just talked about today. And at the end, you can make a decision as to whether or not you want to accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the beginning, what we just talked about. The brown represents the dirt of the earth. And God created the man from the dirt of the earth, okay? And then what God did is he breathed into the nostril of man. And man became a living soul. Remember that? That man became a living soul. And what God did is he put man to sleep and he took a rib out of man and created woman. So you have man and woman, Adam and Eve. Amen? Amen. And God gave them the responsibility and told them to take care of everything in the garden. Okay? It's called the Garden of Eden. And he said in the middle of the garden, there is a tree a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you eat from that tree, you are going to die. And what God meant by death is this, boys and girls, is that right now, Adam and Eve has a perfect, perfect relationship with God. But if they eat from the tree, that relationship is going to be broken because God, he hates sin. Sin separates us from God. Amen. Amen. But right now, everything is okay. Everything is okay. The soul is all clean and perfect and and there's no sin, and because they have not eaten from the tree, but they decided to go and hang around the tree, and when they hung around the tree, boys and girls, Satan saw an opportunity. That's the devil. The devil came in the form of a serpent, and what he did is he told them that they were not going to die. God just didn't want them to know good from evil. Mm. God didn't want him to know good from evil and be wise just like him. So Eve, she looked at the tree. She saw that the tree was good for food and saw that it was pleasing to the eyes. And also it's going to make her wise just like God. So she took from the tree. And when she took from the tree, boys and girls, that was disobedience. That is called sin. When we disobey God, it is called sin. Now things began to start changing. This, their eyes were open. And they realized that they did not have any clothes on. And on the inside, though, it was even worse because their souls who were once were clean has now been covered with darkness, shame, filthiness, and, um, and dirtiness. That is what sin does to the soul. And so that is what happened with Adam and Eve. And so their relationship, boys and girls, that was once like this is now being broken. That means that death is now in the world. And what does that have to do with each one of us? It has to, the, the reason we share this story is that each one of us have sin. The Bible says that sin came into the world through one man and, and through that one, one man came death. That's the separation from God. And all, and death come to all people because all of us have sin. You have sin, I have sin. I have done bad things, you have done bad things. And so our relationship with God is like this until See, God loves us so much, and he doesn't want that relationship to be that way forever. You remember, we said that God gave us a living soul on the inside because he wanted to establish a relationship forever. Amen? Amen. And so what God did is he sent his only son, Jesus, to come to this earth, to die on the cross for your sins and mine. If you believe that with all your heart, and you're ready to give your heart over to God, what God does is he takes the blood of Jesus. 
and washes away all your sins. So your soul is cleansed once again. And that is how we establish a relationship with God. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, then what God does is he cleanses our soul with the blood of Jesus. Because here's what's going to happen, boys and girls. And the reason we share the story in this way is that the, soul, the body is going to die. It's going to stop working. And it's going to turn back to dirt and be buried. The soul is going to live forever. And God's desire is for the soul to live forever with him in the kingdom of heaven. But if your soul is still covered with sin, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. But if you put your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, then what God does is he takes the blood of Jesus and he has cleansed your soul and you will spend eternity in the kingdom of heaven. Boys and girls, if you want to spend eternity in the kingdom of heaven, you want a forever relationship with God, then contact us um, at the number above 901-616-1258. 901-616-1258, and we will walk you through God's plan and the prayer of salvation so that you too can experience a forever relationship with God. Amen? Amen. All right, boys and girls, well, that concludes our lesson for today, and I pray that something has been said that giving you some insight as to how special you really are, more special than any bird, any animal, any insect, anything on this earth. You are that special to Almighty God. And that is why he took the time to breathe into each of us the breath of life so that we can have a relationship with him forever. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Let us go to our Father in prayer. Father God, we thank you. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for just how you have shown yourself um, mighty and power, dear Lord, in the creation of the heavens and the earth. And more importantly, how you've shown yourself how you much, how you truly love each of us and desire for us to have a permanent forever relationship with you. Lord, I pray that if someone has heard this message and do not know you in the forgiveness of their sins, I pray, Father, that they will um, contact us so that we can actually walk them through your plan of salvation so that they can experience a true relationship with you, dear Lord, and have a forever relationship with you. We love you. We adore you. Thank you, Jesus, for making the sacrifice, giving us a chance to spend eternity with, with you in the kingdom of heaven. Lord, we love you. We adore you. Blessed be your most holy name. Continue to bless these children. Continue to protect them and keep them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, so that concludes the lesson for today. Amen. Amen.